Hello and welcome to today's studio armor review. Exodite House Clans, the Lord of War spot for the Avatar of Cain. Now, this is definitely a craft world unit. Uh, even the fluff behind it matches up. With just it's cra It screams craft world. Um, Exodites, uh, it didn't quite fit in my mind really, really well. So, I decided that I need to come up with something a little bit different. <clears throat> but it was kind of a challenge. So we take a look at the stat line for this. Well, and that's what stat lines with the ability. You know, weapon skill blister still 10. That's no big deal. That's just a, the, the cream of the crop in ability. Uh, strength 6, toughness 6. So think of monster creature kind of size. Uh, 5 wounds. Initiative 10, so it's lightning fast. Uh, 5 attacks. Leadership 10, save 3. That's really not too stellar. Uh, fits in the middle, you know. But <clears throat> the whole idea of the Cane Awakened is where the Avatar and all friendly units within 12 inches from the you know, Elder Faction within 12 inches have Fearless, Furious Shard, and Rage. That, you know, this, this unit inspires them. So I had to figure out, well, how would that work? And a Molten Body, it's an unaffected by Pyromancy and Flamer type weapons. And then you have a Melt and Soul Blaze. Well, that was a little bit harder to come up with. And if you look at the actual Remnant of Glory, the Wailing Doom, which is supposed to be a spear, but uh, it's modeled as a actual, uh, what do you call that thing? A, a sword. <laughs> and, uh, um, it, it's, not, it's not quite right. Now, of course, the Forge World model, that has a spear, and that looks awesome. So, but again, it's Strength 8, AP 1. Assault Melta, or that's an that's an shooting. He's shooting, but or is in close combat. It's strength two, which makes it again strength eight, AP one, armor bane. So that's pretty, pretty cool. I had to figure how to make that work. Elves don't do that. Well, it took a little bit, but you know, Exodites are dragon riders. So you're gonna. I've you've seen this part of this model before. But this is the, how I originally envisioned the model as far as representing the Avatar of Cain. <clears throat> now, <laughs> this model, you'll, you might remember the rider being the Autark on a jet bike in an earlier video. But he's he was always meant to be this my dragon king for my craft or sorry about my, my exite planet of Lorien. This is the Dragon King, the leader of all the Exodites on the planet. Now unfortunately I'll, just, I'll make a comment right now. The model itself, the, the reptile model, is a Reaper uh, Pathfinder Dragon. Took the wings off and used green stuff to basically fill in the gaps and make the scales. But it is actually shaded with four or five different colors of blacks and grays and metallic blacks and grays. But unfortunately it was way too subtle so it doesn't pop out as much as it uh, I expected it to. But uh, this is an ebony dragon that the Dragon King rides and any good dragon worth of salt has a breath weapon, which is fantastic. 12 inch range, strength 8 AP 1 Melta. And uh, when he bites in close combat, that's a vicious hit. <clears throat> uh, now, of course, the Dragon King himself is wielding two very large sabers. Uh, those weapons are power weapons, so there's the AP 1 uh, armor bane on there as well. So between the two claws, the two swords, and the mouth, that's five attacks. It fits in real nice. Dragon armor is AP three or armor three, uh, like most monstrous creatures tend to be. The Dragon King has the equivalent of uh, Phoenix armor on, which is three uh, armor three. Or is that Phoenix? No, it's heavy, heavy mesh. I think I forget what they call that. Uh, the heaviest of the Eldar mesh armors. I forget what, they're, what that's actually called. But, uh, hold on one second. I do want to make sure I get this right. Because that armor is actually uh, heavy aspect armor. <clears throat> so, heavy aspect armor is easy to come by. And 
uh, for craft for Eldar in general. So it, I figured it didn't make it wasn't too far of a stretch to have his armor, though it is gilded, uh, to be made of the same material as heavy aspect armor. Again, armor three, armor save three. So this is Dayron. It's D A E R O N. Yes, I am actually kind of phonetic play there on my name, but this is. It, this is one of those models where I had a vision in my head and it actually played out on the table very, very well. It looks great. Now, the Forge World avatar and the Games Workshop avatar both have different bases. The Games Workshop is only 40 millimeter, but the Forge World is a 60 millimeter base. So, <clears throat> this creature is actually larger than the Forge, uh, the, uh, sorry, the larger than the uh, Games Workshop model. And it stands a little bit shorter than. The avatar from Forge World, so it fits the 50, the 60 millimeter base perfectly, and so that's all I had to do is take the Pathfinder Dragon base and glue it to the 60 millimeter base, do some sculpting of some uh, paste to take the Pathfinder Dragon's base and actually make it look more like a rock instead of uh, old temple ruins or what have you, and there he is. He is the leader of everything on Lorien, which is why he inspires the fearless, the furious charge, and the rage special rule. Uh, I just, I was so excited when I was able to kind of make that um, fit. Now, one of the, what I was try, actually trying to do with the Avatar of Cain before I finally settled on this as a potential uh, stand-in for him was try to find an avatar of Lilith. Now that's a tough one. and I don't know, maybe you guys uh, might be able to help me out here. I'm looking for an avatar of Lilith, which would be a female elf figure <coughs> with a staff and kind of a moon type of uh, uh, accents or style to her clothing and what have you, and equipment. Uh, she would have a shield, according to the Eldar uh, Elf fluff, that's what she's got. And those things about her reflect very well in the Avatar of Cain's special abilities. So I'll, if I can ever find that um, model, of course, to try to find a model female elf that stands only six inches tall uh, that isn't risque is kind of difficult. Uh, you know, there's a lot of Elven mages in 28 millimeter or 32 millimeter, but not, and even 54, there's a few, but nothing a little bit larger than that. It's going to need to be twice, I guess, what it's as 100 millimeters or something like that. Because uh, if I was able to do that, I could really, I could basically take Kane out of the picture and make Lilith the be all end all of the, the avatar here. Works, I think it works out perfectly. So, the key to that is not just the model, but the rule set. I want to be able to take the rules and interpret them as Lilith's avatar instead of the Melta that it really is. So, if you look at what you could end up with, um, Lilith is going to have a staff, <clears throat> and the staff can shoot. A 12 inch range beam. So uh, now the moon reflects sunlight. Oh, sunlight is extremely powerful. It kind of can be, uh, you know, reflected energy from the sun. So it can get that melt effect. Um, her four up or five up invuln save from the being a, uh, I guess it's actually it's a demon uh, rule and inspiring fear. She can, you know, she's is the goddess of dreams, so she can give nightmares, which instill fear in the opponent, and she has the moon shield, which would be a five-up invul. Shields are invuls in, in 40k. So there is a lot about her ability uh, of who Lilith is that I can actually interpret into the Avatar rules. So if, if any of you guys know where I could find some pretty decent uh, female sculpts for elves, um, 
with a little, I can, I can stand to do a little bit of conversion. Not a whole lot, though. Uh, not on that scale. That's a pretty big scale to, to do some, you know, fine detail work. I'm not quite that good. Um, but if you can point me in some directions, I am, I'm at a loss trying to find them. Uh, even Reaper Bones had a, there's a storm, or cloud giant. I think it was a storm giant, one of the two. Uh, female. Really looks good, but she, she's not in a, she doesn't look elf, and she looks a little too bulky for an elf. She's got the flowing robes that that, that uh, are gown that uh, Lilith would have, but she's got a club that's it fitted such a way into her leg that it's kind of hard to sculpt that away to replace the stave, especially the way her hands positioned. And the way she's hunched over, it doesn't it's it doesn't lend itself well. That's the closest I've come. So if you guys have any ideas what I could use to make an avatar of Lilith, I'd really appreciate the feedback. Uh, so let me know what you think. Uh, this model is a avatar of Cain's stand-in, uh, being my dragon king, the ruler of all of Lorien. Hope you uh, got inspired by some different ways of looking at a model and interpreting it, taking the effects of its special war gear or special abilities, and redefining how it gets that ability. How do, where does the armor bane come from in close combat, the bite? Where does the... 12 inch melt to come from the breath weapon here just hopefully it gives you the you know a good feel so uh maybe some, open your eyes some some creative interpretations of some of your your favorite units that you might want to take a, take a different slant on uh let me know what you think in, in below and let me know if you know of any good models i could use to for avatar lilith share like subscribe i really appreciate you watching and hanging out with me i'll see you in the next video all right bye bye